a cutting in the sea of the north of the Imbrium, where the Jura Mountains is, and uh, what is called actually the part near the Caucasian Mountains, is the uh, Alpine Valley. Amazing. Yeah, it's in lower part so when you see the a parallel dotted line as if parallel to that mountain inward to the, um, the sea of rains is where the Apollo 15 landed in the mountains. Try to zoom on down. What you can see there in the center is the Copernicus crater. To the right of it is the Kepler crater. And the dot, tiny dot, to the right of that Kepler, near the edge of the white area, where the down to it a little bit lower is a black dot, that's Grimaldi. That tiny white dot is the uh, magnetic anomaly called the uh, Rainer Gamma, or Rainer Gamma. As you can see, the thin layer of cloud is exists in the sky. It's moving. It's mist, practically. And, uh, yeah, the Italy-shaped uh, area to the top uh, is the Jura Mountains. And uh, and you can see a tiny dot also in that your mountains called Plateau actually, Crater Plateau, the philosopher. The bright dot to the two o'clock in this image. If you imagine the top part is twelve and the lower part is six. At two o'clock of the image, in the middle of the in in somewhere in the black patch, the white dot is Aristarchus, and the area around it is Aristarchus Plateau, the volcanic area.
Yes, the clouds are making it really dark. I want to test what it actually should be. And the circular feature, black circular feature at the top at 12 o'clock is, um, is the big black circle uh, is the Mare uh, um, Embryon Sea of the Rains and uh, to the lower part of it at 7 o'clock of that circle what you can see is the mountains of the Apennine yeah, Apennine And the uh, rugged area, which has uh, something like a coffee bean shaped, uh, there is no name, you will be surprised. But to the south of it, you see a tiny crater, and that is actually Huygens. Um, I don't know what's the reason for this vibration because the motor of the camera is not on. Probably the movement causes the camera to uh, try to focus again on it. Let me just see if I can put the focus on the manual. Okay, there is a crater here called um, Asiruddin. That's the crater which I'm now zooming on it tiny one at the end of the three craters which are joined together is called Asiridin after the Iranian astronomer. Is the time of the 
lunar cycle that mostly people will miss because it's very early morning and there's half of it falls at daylight. And either people are sleeping yet or they are just uh, going to work, so practically they will miss. And only you can see it in such a day like today, which is a holiday. change the resolution to 4k hopefully you will not see much pixelation you will see anyway but uh, not as bad as it was What you see is now passing the center of the picture, hopefully, is what is called as Aristarchus Plateau. And the light is not very good and also the clouds are closing a little bit. Uh, you can see the color of it is it different. It's so, uh, one of the olivine rich area. Olivine is a metal that, uh, the mineral that exists in the mantle area of the planets crust mantle core if you remember these are the layers of the planets planetary bodies uh, which are made of rock or any other matters it has this kind of layering any object differentiated object gravitational differentiation so it's now passing the center, top, top of the center, above the center. And the brightest spot is the Aristarchus crater itself. And to the lower part of the image you can see the Reiner Gamma. Oh, suddenly it became so clear. Try to bring it to the center, yeah, it's now right dead center, I'm doing all this with my mobile camera, but uh, I use a bracket, it's one of these ones that I bought, Digicam attachment adapter, I bought it from China, really I'm happy with the result.
you are looking through the eyepiece, there they go. I just enjoy the view. Um, yeah, good as a map. All these lunar features are created by impact. Circular features are called crater. Well, the craters to me are superficial because what you see is the geological feature like mantles, faults, even faults. I've seen some faults, can you believe it? And some uh, trust faults and faults. You have to look for them. And as my scale in digiscoping increases, I will try to show you more of these features. Aristarchus again is at 2 o'clock, and uh, at 2 o'clock or half past 3, you can see the tiny dot up there. Rhino gamma, that man uh, magnetic anomaly. The superficial feature, they say that is because the soil of the moon, the lunar soil in that part, due to the magnetic field, could not be weathered, uh, blackened, darkened by the um, solar wind. And that's the reason the, they have remained bright. They deflect the charged particles. You know that charged particles deflect in the magnetic field. So if there is a magnetic field there, all will be, it is working. So the interesting anomalies. You can imagine if you're a science writer, science fiction writer, you can write about that. Is <laughs> a city or something to trying to protect itself from the damaging and carcinogenous effects of the sun and uh, yeah, magnetic storms from the sun. Yeah, that's actually I made a good story. You know? <laughs> if you're writing, write it. Yeah, right. Just give credit to me. Hard for sure. Beautiful, magnificent uh, Caucasus Mountains. And the moon is a spherical. Clearly, you can see when I focus on the edge of the picture, the 